Hey there, folks. Uh, so I did a video quite a while back on this Game Boy Pocket in particular. Um, I've actually done several videos on this Game Boy Pocket because this one has a uh, battery mod kit. It also even has a button LED mod. Um, but anyway, the point I want to talk about is I want to revisit one of the mods that I have done previously to this thing. Um, very, very recently, uh, as a matter of fact, today, uh, it just released on Twitter, um, someone who I'm totally forgetting the name, let me scroll up here, uh, their handle is KGSWS, I will go ahead and link it down below, uh, but they just released this on, uh, on Twitter, they're showing off their custom OSD for their backlight kit. Um, and you notice there's at least one new feature that this adds. There's that uh, splash screen. You can put any logo you want in there. It totally overhauls the OSD itself um, in what I think is a much more aesthetically pleasing um, setup. It does add a couple of small features, just, just a couple. Uh, but really all it's doing is reworking existing features and using them a little bit more creatively. Um, so first thing, I like it because of the splash screen. I put splash screens on just about everything that I can. Um, and you almost never see this because I almost never use this soldering iron. But if we use, if I plug in my TS-80P, oh, it's, that son of a gun. <laughs> I just tried getting the splash screen off of it, and it must have corrupted. Ah, oh, until now. Until now I had it splash screen. Hang on, I want to fix that. Alright, I, I just tracked down my splash screen file, so I actually had it handy. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, I was trying to pull it off this thing because that was the only thing that I knew of that had a, uh, a splash screen that I could pull. But anyway, um... It turns out you can't copy the splash screen off this thing once it's already there, so back it up beforehand, I guess. Um, or at least I wasn't able to, but anyway. So let's let's talk about this mod itself. Um, like I mentioned, there are a couple new features. I like the, the way the colors are handled a little bit better. Instead of having the bars that you adjust, you can just straight input a hex code. That makes things significantly easier. It's the exact same subsystem, it just basically has a facelift. Uh, so there are two parts to this backlight kit. Let me let me start tearing it down so I can uh, not make this video too long. So there are two parts to this backlight kit. The first part, uh, the part that I'm sure everyone knows exists, uh, is the module that takes the screen data from the Game Boy and converts the data into a format that the LCD that we're using likes and displays the data. However, when uh, the company that made this backlight kit added the on-screen display functionality, um, they didn't add it to that module. They added a completely separate module that handles that functionality. And then, um, well, this mod hacks that module. So we're not changing how the conversion is handled at all. Um, we're just changing some of the data that's being fed to the screen. Uh, so now I'm speculating based off of how this works and the fact that we're not reflashing the FPGA, but only one of the microcontrollers in this thing. Um, I'm speculating that those features, like the backlight colors and such, are, um, they're, they're just registers that the microcontroller is adjusting. So on the main FPGA, you know, if, if this pin is high, we display green instead of black or something, you know, whatever, I'm just making something up. Um, so I think we're interjecting and uh, going from, we're, we're, we're changing what the microcontroller does, uh, but the end result is about the same. Okay. I just did a 
god awful job of explaining that. I am so sorry. But let's get this thing torn down a little bit more. Okay. Can I lift that up? No, I can't because I never stuck down my backlight mod and now it's stuck. Okay, so I wanted to do this Game Boy specifically because A, it's already got a handful of mods and I think it'll be fun to, you know, what's what's one more mod? Uh, but B, because it's the one that has this specific backlight kit. We, this, this mod only works for this backlight kit. So how this normally works is the Game Boy sends its screen data over this cable straight into this FPGA right here, and then this FPGA works the magic and then it comes out here and goes to the LCD right here. What we're doing is we're hijacking this chip here, which interfaces into the FPGA, but doesn't go straight into the Game Boy itself. Uh, we're changing the code on this chip, and, um, well, that should give us a better OSD experience, so it would seem. So one of the new features, as I already showed, was the um, splash screen. The other feature uh, that we're going to retrofit is brightness control via the um, contrast wheel. So this is something that the funny playing kits do out of the box, at least for Game Boy Pocket, but the Game Boy or the OC or one chip kits have never had that functionality. Adding it seems pretty straightforward. So let's give it a shot. Uh, to do that, we need least one capacitor. We want a one microfarad capacitor. I'm going to use a surface mount one, 0603, because that's what I have. Uh, I also need to find my tweezers. There they are. And, well, I think that's about all we need. Okay, so first we need to get a wire soldered to the LCD connector here. Uh, so, the maker solders it straight to the ribbon, but I'm going to solder it to the back of the connector because I already have a bunch of wires going from the board itself to the backlight board via the buttons and power, so why not? Uh, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins over from the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, we want this pin right here. Uh, I'm guessing, let me count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So it's the one just right of the uh, white arrow. I missed my solder stand already. I have just moved. Oops, that's the wrong pin. And I have not quite gotten everything set up yet, especially my, my, my hobby area, my computer room. Um, so all of this I have just pulled out of bins and, and set up just to make this video. Uh, we want wire. Where do I have wire? I have wire right here. We're just going to use one of these convenient pre-cut bad boys. Because that makes my life so much easier. And we'll solder that in to this pin right here. Again, this is not necessary for the mod we're doing, but you know, might as well take advantage of the new features. You know, get get as much bang for our buck as we can. That is nice and sturdy. I'm gonna do a pro gamer move here. I'm gonna feed it straight through the board even. got a hole, I'm going to use it. 
or something of that sort. All right. And I'm wondering if maybe we should just do it exactly the way they did it. Let me get something I can put under here so I'm not soldering on the back of the screen. I didn't really anticipate it being stuck down, but here we go. Nice piece of aluminum for insulation. Uh, I believe we want to tin all four of these pads right here. Decide if I'm left handed or right handed today. Hopefully, I don't launch this thing because I only have so many. necessarily want to though. I wonder if we can burn away some of the insulation. Oh shoot, this place has no ventilation set up yet. I'm breathing all this in. I forgot. Get a get a fume extractor. So that isn't working. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, sorry, please forgive the um, extra background noise, uh, but I like not inhaling flux fumes as I'm working. All right, so we're just gonna kind of dead bug this wire in here. I stripped back a little bit of the insulation before the end so that I can solder it to this capacitor. And then now that that's soldered down, Bring that up and around, and we want to attach it to one, two, three, four, five, the fifth pin over. We've got one, two, three, four, five, right in the middle. That's uh, going to be annoying to solder to. This joint again. Cool. So that was just the hardware prep. Um, this wire was totally unnecessary, except that I want to set up the volume wheel brightness controls, like I mentioned. Um, sorry, but that fan is staying on at least for the next few minutes because my cat just laid down in front of it. That's why I never stuck that down. There were wires under it. Okay. Um, what do we need to do now? Is my battery wire hooked up? 
indeed it is. I think we're good to go. Okay, so next we need to flash this thing, uh, and that involves using a UART converter, uh, or a UART adapter, programming jig, whatever the heck. Uh, it's, it's all basically the same thing. If you have just about any old Arduino with a USB bridge chip on it, you should be able to use one of those as long as you can get three volts out of the thing. Um, like this won't work because there's no bridge chip. This won't work because there's no bridge chip. This should work just fine because there's a bridge chip. Um, look at the Git, GitHub repository. The supported hardware should be listed. I'm going to use mine because I literally already have a dedicated bit of hardware for this. I just need to desolder it from the thing I was working on last. Get that junk out of here. And we need an extra wire because I never hooked up the 3 volt line. Easy enough. Eight gauge. What is it? It is twenty six gauge. All right, well, that works better. Cool, cool. Uh, and so now, I believe we need to solder up the 3.3 volt right here. Uh, we also need... Rx is the left one. makes TX the right one. And the last one we need is a ground. I'm going to bend that out of the way make sure it doesn't touch anything. Uh, I think I'm also going to use a different ground because Oops, those should be connected. I'm going to use this one. I probably shouldn't have wired up that uh, mod just yet because now I have nowhere to put my ground. But that's okay. I put it right there. All right. And now that it's wired up, it is over to the computer for flashing. Um, I will say this, I'm not going to help you with getting that set up. Everything you need should be in the GitHub repository, but I will give you a few recommendations. Uh, so there are three prerequisites that you need to install. You need Python, you need Make, and you need uh, SDCC, uh, Small Device C Compiler, I believe it is. Um, Whatever platform you want to use, they should all work. I personally did it on Windows, uh, but the idea is get all of that installed and then just try compiling the software. Uh, the GitHub repository, which I will link this in the description, but the original tweet that we're referencing here, there's a GitHub repository right there. Yeah, so you need Python 3 with the Pillow library. You have to install Pillow separately. You can install that with pip. Uh, you need Make, which most Linux distributions, I believe, come with. Same with SDCC, but Windows does not. Uh, oh, and you need STCGAL, uh, but you can also install that through Python with pip. 
Uh, but otherwise, just clone the repository. All of the files that you need are in here. Um, open a terminal window in that same repository and then just run make and if all goes well it's going to spit out this flash.ihx file. Um, once you know that you can compile the software then make <clears throat> then make your modifications. Uh, so for example the modifications I made I swapped out the splash screen. I enabled uh, the contrast backlight control because that's not enabled by default. Um, and I changed the offset for the battery measurement, the battery gauge, because by default, the battery meter that is built into this kit is set to alkaline batteries. And so it's going to say your battery is low when an alkaline battery would be low, which is around 2.3 volts, give or take. As soon as your batteries are reading about 2.3 volts, they're pretty much dead, especially AAA is on a pocket. Um, I don't know what the corresponding ADC value is, but this thing has a lithium ion battery mod in it. Uh, so the low voltage cutoff, uh, there isn't really a cutoff, but the low voltage warning should probably be around 3.3 volts, give or take. At least that's what I set it to, or that's what I tried setting it to. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I tried reading through the documentation on this microcontroller, but it's quite literally all in Chinese. Um, Google Translate was a little bit of a help, but I couldn't get as far as I needed to, so I made a total shot in the dark guess. Uh, the default value is, this is a hex number, 1A00 for about 2.3 volts. I set it to 1996 and the goal is hopefully about 3.3 volts but we'll see i have literally no idea how charged this thing is uh, but anyway once you've got your environment set up once you've got the code compiled it's time to flash it so i'm gonna go flash this and i'll be right back okay so things aren't going too well over here uh, so i plugged in my original adapter and this thing instantly converted to magic smoke um, and this doesn't work at all anymore now i think I accidentally had one or several of the loose wires dangling against something else because it, it was working and then I moved it around and plugged it into my computer, tried to flash, and now it doesn't work at all. And whenever I plug it in, it gets really, really hot. So I'll just replace it. It's, it's served me well. Anyway, I'm trying the Arduino now. Um, well knockoff Arduino. It isn't a legit Arduino. It's the Robot Din Uno. But it has, if you can focus on that, the CH340G chip, which should be compatible. And yet, we're getting stuck waiting for MCU. Uh, and so this, this, happen, this seems to happen with all of my 340G uh, chips. Um, well, I haven't tried all of them, but I've actually tried a couple Arduinos. I ended up settling on this one because this one has a micro USB port, and that's just a lot easier than mini USB, um, or heaven forbid, USB Type B. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. It's not working. I gotta order another adapter and try uh, flashing this thing up another time. All right, it has been several months since I. Uh film that first part of the video here, um, but there were quite a few hurdles to cross, and um, especially I had to wait for shipping for a new UART programmer. But let me go ahead and get this bad boy unplugged here. Uh, this is the programmer that I ended up going with because the other ones weren't quite working for me. Uh, if you can see this chip here, probably not, let me adjust adjust the lighting a little bit uh, so you can see exactly what part I'm using. Uh, this is uh, SI Labs something something CP2102. Yeah, I think the rest of that doesn't matter. It's a CP2102. Um, I went through several programmers before I found this one, and this one happens to work perfectly fine with the STCGAL, STCGAL, 
<laughs> um, program that I used to uh, write the flash chip as per um, the program designer's recommendation. Um, they didn't recommend this particular board. I, I ended up buying like um, five different programmers from like three different sellers and, and so on. And then uh, this, this one seemed to work for me pretty reliably. Um, I, of course, just had the four wired up, the TX, RX, ground, and 3.3 volt. What would happen was I would plug this into the computer, I'd run the command to flash, and then I'd wait for the program to, uh, to sit there waiting on MCU, and then I'd go ahead and plug in the 3.3 volt line, and that would send the reset command and allow me to flash the MCU. And of course, I left that plugged in the whole time it was programming. And then I unplugged it as soon as it was done programming. And that seemed to work. Um, I will go ahead and I'll, I'll share the specific command that I used to flash this thing because I had to do a little bit of trial and error, especially with this thing. Um, but it worked for me. Um, I'm not going to give it to you in a uh, copy-pasteable form because of who I am as a person. Um, or maybe I will. I don't know yet. Uh, but just... Just because there were uh, a few little customizations that I had to do, um, like I said, trial and error with this thing. Uh, additionally, let me go ahead and unplug this battery here. Uh, you can see I wired up a header pin to this thing. Um, this made it a little bit easier for me because I think I ended, up, I ended up flashing this thing like 20 times. Um, I don't know. We got there in the end. There were some incompatibilities, but it's quite all right. Uh, I was considering leaving this in here so that I can go back and flash again if I want to, but I think at this point it's working. I'm just going to leave it alone. So needless to say, um, this whole project, if you decide you want to try it out for yourself, you know, that's that's fine. I'm sure you can work something out. It's not too unreasonable to do. Uh, just keep in mind that it is not beginner friendly. And if you're not, if you're afraid that you won't be able to commit yourself all the way to the end, then um, you might be left with a non-working mod. I need... An insulator. I forgot to grab that. One moment. I swear, this thing unironically comes in handy so frequently. Um, this board is, of course, attached to the screen, so I just want to put a little bit of a spacer in there while I disconnect these wires. Uh, so the green one, I believe, was voltage? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, TX and RX. Oh, I'm pulling on the wrong one. And then I ended up just wiring up the ground to the back of that capacitor. Hopefully it comes off without taking the whole capacitor. Ooh. Capacitor definitely moved. Let's solder that down again. There we go. I'm okay with that. I'm going to just clean up my soldering here. And I might as well clean up the board while I'm in here. Uh, the rest of this can stay as it was. I did go ahead and add in the extra touchpad here. Uh, I never did that in the first half of the video, but it's literally just um, a little bit of copper tape attached to a wire soldered into the shell. Uh, this gives me full control. This firmware, as it were, is designed around having five inputs. And when I originally installed this kit, I left one out, so I only had the four inputs. Um, this last one is for quick changing the color palettes, so you don't necessarily need it if you don't want it. And of course, you can program the inputs any way you want anyway. Uh, so it's not too big a deal. Let's get some IPA. That thing's empty. That is very not empty. That'll do. Now, let me get.
get the card back just in case. I don't want to get IPA in the screen. Give me an extra little bit of a barrier. Because if all goes according to plan, this is the last time I have this Game Boy open. I will probably open it several more times. But hopefully I don't. There's only so many mods we can do. Alright, that's better. And up here as well. That's going to have to be good enough. I can't really get in there the way I want. Okay. Better than nothing. Should be good to go to reassemble this. Um, I will, of course, post all of the changes that I made. Um, again, not necessarily in a copy-paste friendly format, um, because I don't know that all of the changes that I made I don't think that those are all going to be universal, so I'll just I'll talk you through what I did while I'm reassembling this, and um, if you decide to embark on this or a similar project, well, hopefully you are armed with all of the information that you need. Um, so first and foremost, I ended up contacting the author of this mod, uh, KGSWS, on Twitter because I think I have a slightly different hardware revision than he designed this stuff for. Um, so what was going on was even though I had mine flashed, uh, I was getting some weird timing errors um, where the menu itself was offset from where it was supposed to be and, and so on. Uh, and we worked out two different fixes for two different errors there. Uh, and so one of the code modifications I did, which is now um, documented in his repository, uh, is that I had to add a delay to the SPI timing commands. And that is the, that, that's the change that I made in the SPI CMD.C file. Um, I don't know if that's still strictly necessary with the other change that I made. But, I don't know, it's what I did, it seems to work. Uh, oh shoot, I forgot to plug in the battery. Uh, the other change, um, of course, was the logo file, but I'm definitely not sharing that one. That one's mine, and this is a one-off. Um, but the other file that was edited was the defs.h, or definitions header. Um, I added quite a few changes there. Uh, so first, I swapped the A and B buttons in firmware. I don't know if I wired them up backwards with this thing originally by accident, or um, if that's just another one of those weird changes between my hardware version and KGSWS's hardware. Um, but it seemed to make more sense my way, and it was a lot easier to just swap it in firmware than to rewire my kit. Um, also, let's see what else I did. Ah, yeah. I, of course, enabled the ADC backlight control, which allows me to control the backlight with the contrast wheel here. Uh, I changed the... Oh, God, what do we call it? The... I don't know. For lack of better terminology, I'm, I'm blanking right now. Did I really have that wired up that way? That seems silly. Whatever. Um, I changed the offset value for the ADC battery detection. Um, by default, from the original manufacturer and from KGSWS, the kit is designed to trigger a low battery warning with alkaline batteries. I'm not using an alkaline battery. I'm using a lithium ion battery. So I changed the offset. I mentioned this in the uh, other half of this video um, two months ago, what I changed it to, but I ended up picking a different value. Um, that'll be up on screen right now, I imagine. Um, but what I did was I calculated 
the internal voltage comparator or whatever it is using the formula in the data sheet. Uh, I did not have the internal voltage comparator, whatever it's called. I'm totally forgetting the terminology. This was months ago and I was using Google Translate. Um, using the value that KGSWS provided. So I knew that approximately 2.3 volts was the default value of like 2A00 or something like that. Um, sorry, 1A00. And so I worked backwards using that value to get the internal voltage comparison. And then I calculated my own voltage comparison uh, using that value. And I came up with 254E for approximately uh, 3.5-ish volt uh, detection there. The idea was I wanted the low battery warning to come on when the battery is close to being depleted. Not when the battery is depleted, but when the battery is close to being depleted. That way it gives me a warning. You know, I can still keep playing, but I should probably consider uh, pausing and stopping. Um, I don't know, I figured that would be a little bit more in line with what a stock Game Boy would do, so that seemed more appropriate to me. And in my testing so far, it seems to trigger somewhere between 3.5 and 3.6 volts, which, I mean, it's close enough to what I wanted that I'm not going to bother fixing it. But otherwise, that's about it. Oh, and the last thing I changed, of course, is I enabled the function that is commented out. The new function that he added as of about two weeks ago of filming called uh, SPI OSD address offset, and I left it at the default value of, I think, negative two. Yeah. And that fixed my shifted OSD. I will go ahead and link to the Twitter thread if you want to read through it. Um, excuse me, the X thread if you want to read through it. Read through it. When I started this process, it was still Twitter. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, um, now, uh, KGSWS stand-up fella helped me helped me get this working, and um, I'm actually pretty grateful for that. But here we go in its full glory there. And then, of course, it's just going to work like normal. My right touchpad... Yeah. Right touchpad, or left if you're looking at it from the other side, just... Quick swap between palettes. Uh, AB start select doesn't do anything anymore as is intended. Uh, however, to get into the OSD, you just hit the other touch palette and uh, our touch sensor and shada. I do need to adjust the V position just a hair. Things got shifted around with the new firmware. I think that should be good. Wow, my screen is crooked. Oh no, I guess I do have to pull it apart again. Oh well. Uh, so you get the same adjustments. You get H position, V position. Uh, we can change the palette. Uh, that's what this touch sensor does, but it doesn't do anything when you're in the OSD. Um, you can, of course, hard code any palettes you want during uh, firmware compilation. But the defaults that KGSWS has provided are actually very reasonable. Um, I, I have zero complaints with them. And even if you don't like it, you can go in and edit them anyway. Uh, not even, uh, even after it's compiled, you can just make your own custom color palettes. Uh, so you have the four colors that you can adjust. The black, the dark gray, the light gray, and then the whites. Um, and then you get a full hex code there, but I'm not going to bother messing with that right now. Uh, pixel grid, that's the exact same option. Of course, we only have the two options because that's all this kit was ever programmed with in the beginning from the original manufacturer. This is not something that KGSWS can adjust without reprogramming the FPGA in this thing too. Uh, but as you know, we only ever programmed the microcontroller. Uh, next up, we have the battery monitor, which I have left to enabled. That's what one is. One is true, zero is false. Um, 
I left mine enabled. Of course, it doesn't show up because all it is is it's a low battery warning. So as soon as my battery crosses the threshold from like 3.6 to 3.5 ish volts, I don't know exactly how uh, precise that is, but somewhere in there, I'll get a little battery logo up in the top left corner, which we might see by the end of this video because th this battery is not very charged at all. I, um, I let it drain down until the warning came on and then I charged it for like 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and that's about it. There would be one more option, uh, and that would be brightness, but I don't have that in my OSD because I have it connected up to the contrast wheel. So now I can just spin my contrast wheel to quick adjust the brightness. And of course it saves because it's based off of uh, wherever this wheel is positioned. And it's like, it, it works shockingly well. I'm very impressed with this. Um, so all in all, I'm really satisfied. I need to move this touch sensor so it doesn't trigger every time I hit the power switch, but it doesn't seem to cause any issues yet. But either way, it's still pretty neat that we have that, uh, cool splash screen. Uh, I like customizing things with my own logo because I can. And, uh, it worked out really well here. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a bug with my kit, and I get that four pixels on the left there, but it goes away as soon as the splash screen stops scrolling, so I don't know what it is, and um, to be honest, I don't feel like spending that much time fixing it because it's only present for like two seconds and then it goes away, so whatever. It is what it is. Um, if you're a code wizard and feel like digging into it, of course, it's not my code, uh, so I can't really help you out there, but KGSWS's code is open source. I will, of course, link to that down in the description. And um, yeah, otherwise, I'm genuinely really impressed with this. Um, this is phenomenal work. I I don't even know how to begin doing something like this. It's kind of crazy. Um, you'd think a software engineering major would not be this clueless when it comes to software, but I haven't touched any software dev in like 10 years. Don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm really satisfied with it. It's a really, really neat mod, but like I've said several times throughout this video, um, there are a lot of chances for failure with something like this. Uh, and there is no way to recover this. Once you have your thing flashed, there's no unflashing it. Um, these microcontrollers do have readout, readout protection enabled, which means you can't dump them. So the only thing you can do is just reflash it with, uh, with your code and, and hope eventually you get it right. Uh, so on that note, if you're not like extraordinarily confident in this entire process and your ability to to come to completion um i would highly recommend not engaging in this that being said um you know at the end of the day it is kind of hard to mess up yeah the osd might not work but the whole screen backlight kit portion of this thing is probably always going to work no matter what you do to the microcontroller the only problem is the microcontroller also dictates where the image is on the LCD. So if that's messed up, you're going to be locked to, I don't remember if it's the top left or bottom right corner, um, which doesn't work in this shell very well, but I don't know. Either way, not too bad. Um, I'm really impressed with it. Super cool stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm running in circles now, but. I don't know, super cool stuff. I'll, I'll link to all the stuff that I use down in the description, um, including the programmer. Highly recommend wiring up header pins like this too so that you can just quick disconnect and rewire stuff if you need to uh, swap out programmers as I did like six times, uh, but it works, it's fine. And now this will go back in the drawer of shame with the uh, other programmers.
yeah, neat stuff. Most of all, I'm glad to have this thing finally put back together. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this has been um, informative, and if not, at least entertaining, or vice versa. One, one, one of the two. I'll, I'll settle for one of the two. <laughs> uh, but, you know, hope, hope, hopefully both. Uh, but anyway... Links in the description. Uh, shout out to KW, KGSWS again um, for his Herculean effort in not only making this project possible in the first place, but helping me get it working on my hardware version. Um, again, I don't, I don't know. My hardware is indistinguishable from his, aside from the fact that mine had the buttons uh, silk screened onto the motherboard, whereas his was a little sticker. In the same place. I don't know if that's the the differentiating factor. If, if yours is silk screen, maybe you have to use that OSD offset. And if yours is a sticker, maybe you don't have to use that OSD offset. I don't know. Uh, but either way, the replacement firmware is fully open source. There is room for lots of customization if you want, like you know, a pretty cool silk screen. Uh, you could also go in and change all of the graphics for these options if you want. Um, you can remove options, but you can't really add options because anything that you add has to be supported by the FPGA in the first place, and besides brightness, these are the only options that are supported by the FPGA. So, not a whole lot you can do, but you can at least change the buttons around if you want. You can change the toggle from just the single tap of the touch sensor back to A, B, start, select if you want. Um, but I never really liked that shortcut. I like the, well, it doesn't work in the startup, but I like, I like the touch sensor better. It, it feels better, especially since these inputs don't send while we're in the OSD. That's actually kind of nice. But anyway, that's besides the point. I'll keep rambling if you let me, so I'm going to end it here. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient with me, especially with this slower upload schedule, but I'm hoping that maybe Maybe it helps me get back into the groove of things, you know, if I'm a little bit more passionate about the the content I'm covering, maybe it should uh, Help increase the quality of the content that I'm putting out. So we'll see. I don't know but Maybe I'll fall back into my, my old ways and start putting out videos for every little thing that comes across my desk. We'll see. Only time will tell. Um, but anyway, thanks for sticking with me. You guys have been awesome. Um, thanks again, again, again to KGSWS. And um, catch you all next time.